Dr. Ranganathan, it strikes me as a little odd that no one has thought it necessary, especially from the opposition and you know the usual ecosystem of, uh, uh, of uh, secular persuasion to come out and condemn this in uh, absolute terms. Uh, good evening, Rahul. Uh, look, let me make it very clear. Poverty or illiteracy have got nuts with fundamentals. Fundamentals have. And even though your financial or educational status might change, the fundamentals will never change. They are eternal. You can be from Harvard or Cambridge for, or IIT or JNU and still blow up the World Trade Center or charge at a temple shouting Allah Akbar. In fact, the more educated you are, the more convinced you are of the fundamentals. Please understand, there is nothing called radicalization or radical Islam. If a Muslim reads, imbibes, memorizes, practices, preaches, extols a book that explicitly defines who is a true believer or a non-believer, 33, 36, 3, 1, 32, 8, 2, 49, 15, and there's more than half of its verses asking for the destruction and total annihilation of non-believers, polytheists, Jews, Christians, saying they are the worst of creatures, 98.6, never to be married to 2.221, should be roasted in hell, 4.56, that no other deity has the right to be worshipped except Allah, 40.62. Does he become a radical Muslim? Are 1.8 billion Muslims radical? Because all of them are, by the very definition of being Muslim, they have to believe that these commandments by Allah and true and inviolable. That is why I say Islamophobia is actually the rational fear of discussing Islam in its entirety among Muslims, which is the ACM snare the fundamentalist but spare the fundamentals. It is the so-called moderate Muslims, Rahul, who are fear Islam. They fear to bring out the commandments of their holy book in their entirety on Jews, Christians, Hindus, homosexuality, apostasy, heresy, dress code, vice beating, blasphemy, because they fear being called illiberal and hypocrite. So they end up condemning and branding as radicals the Muslims who are faithfully following the fundamentals. Another thing, prison time, I am afraid, is useless because a prison is supposed to reform you, your thinking. But in this case, you are forbidden to reform the fundamentals. They are there when you come out, and they are open-ended and for all time. The disbelievers of that time were seen to possess certain characteristics. And it is these characteristics that are ordered to be punished in the holy book. The orders are not for the disbelievers of that time. They are for anyone who possesses these characteristics for all time. Please understand, Rahul, what Rabindranath Tagore said. Quote, Islam has distinct enmity against all other religions. It is not just satisfied with observing its own religion, but is determined to destroy all other religions, unquote. Or what Ambedkar said, quote, the brotherhood of Islam is not the universal brotherhood of man. It is a brotherhood of Muslims for Muslims only. Islam is a closed corporation, and those who are outside the corporation, there is nothing but contempt and enmity, unquote. I was just 10 seconds. Now, will you call Tagore and Ambedkar Sanghi bigots? I know you can call me Sanghi bigots. But will you call Ambedkar and Tagore Sanghi bigots? Hindus may not like it, but the fact is they are living on borrowed time. This, this, is, where, this is where my good friend Sanjay, true to his nature, is muddying the water. Because Kiran, he mentioned Ms. Kiran Mazumdar. So, with due respect, Two thoughts. Ms. Kiran Mazumdar. Now, now, Sanjay, I didn't interrupt you. Please give me 30 seconds. Please. Thank you. It's a wonderful debate we're having. I'm listening to everyone. Thank you. Uh, Rahul, uh, with due respect to Ms. Kiran Mazumda Shaw, she is either ignorant or scared, but knowing her intelligence, I suspect she is doing both. Let me expose her ignorance and unfounded fear. Number one, the rule to disallow... Uh, Aran is not fair. She is not on the show. Up, shop, she is not on the show. You can't make personal the Congress well, Then you shouldn't have brought her up. When Sanjay Dha was no, in I Congress, can. it was not I a can. BJP idea. It was drafted as Karnataka Air Rights Act 2002 by the Congress government. Again, I don't agree with what the Congress did. But then why is it that the BJP is fault alone for following the law that was made by Congress? And why didn't Ms. Shaw ever castigate Siddharamaya or SN Krishna Congress government for this? And number two, because, the hijab because issue the Congress has not been dealt with by the, the court. And they have sided with the government. 
even though I humbly disagree with the court's decision, because in my view, what is and isn't essential in religion cannot be defined by a court, but rather by a believer, especially as Allah has set out in dealing with this court. In any case, Ms. Shaw should take up the issue with the court and not the government, and Mr. Sanjay Jha should come prepared for the debate. Okay.